Welcome to the Martial Arts of Sales. Hope everyone had a great weekend. It's a beautiful day today here in El Paso, Texas. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about the content that I'm putting together in the new year. Is it gonna be a series of sales from the opening of a phone call to the closing to the follow-up, uh, dealing with rebuttals and objections and determining what's a real objection, what's a buying question, and I'm gonna talk about a formula that I use and that I've been using for 30 years that's gonna allow you to be more consistent in converting more leads into sales. So what I wanna talk about today is there are six steps that you need to master, that you need to develop or sharpen to be more consistent in closing and converting deals. Or, or selling value to every customer. And what I mean by every customer is the customers that you're targeting for your products or services. That's what I mean by that. You're not gonna get everyone, but the ones you do get, those are your customers, okay? So let's get into this. The number one thing is, and this is just me, is you gotta be willing to do the work, whatever work that is. You gotta be willing to make improvements being a salesperson or a closer. You can't be a closer unless you know how to sell. Now the word sell offends people psychologically. Nobody likes to be sold, but they do like to buy, right? So someone is selling them. You just gotta know and understand how the customers buy. And there's only two ways we all buy. We either want something or we need something. It's just the way it is, just to keep it simple. So the six steps to selling value to all of your customers, because it is all about value, right? So the number one thing is you have to believe in your abilities, in your ability to solve their problem, to tell them why they need it, that you know that you're good at what you do because everyone on the other side of the phone wants to deal with an expert, wants to deal with someone that knows what they're doing. So they could be more receptive. So you have to believe in your ability, not only as a salesperson, but as a closer, as a problem solver, as a storyteller. You have to do all of that. You have to believe in your ability to helping a customer. That's what you have to do. No ways around that. Okay, number two, this is very, very important. You have to believe in your product or the services you offer. If you don't believe in the product that you're offering and you don't own the product that you're selling or offering, you're not gonna be able to sell it. You're not gonna be able to convey it the way you should. And the customers will figure that out. They'll feel that you don't even believe in what you're selling. And I'm gonna give you an example. About a year ago, two years ago, when I first got into the social media, you know, I didn't have a website, I didn't have certain things, but I was presenting it. And I got called out on that one time. And you know what, I'll never do that again. So if you believe in what you're selling and the product and services, then you should own it as well. Does that make sense? So. Once you believe in the product, all you're gonna really need is five bullet points to sell any product, which is an, 
what are the topics I'm going to talk about down the road? You know, what you need to sell every product. What ingredients do you need to sell any product anytime? So number two is you have to believe in the product that you're offering to the customer. Number three, persuasion. Now, we're all being persuaded one way or another. Whether we accept that or not, that's up to you. I know I'm being persuaded, but I understand that. That's the art of selling. You gotta persuade people. You persuade people with facts, with disclosing the problem, offering solutions. How do you persuade people? With conviction. The art of storytelling and conviction. Because if you're not convinced, one, that you believe in the product and services. Two, that it can help the customer. And number three, that it'll solve their problem. You're not going to persuade them. So you have to be very persuasive. Not manipulating, not lying, not misrepresenting, not embellishing. Telling a story, the art of storytelling, based on facts that you learned about. The facts about the customer when you do a questionnaire with them or you do a profile with them, uh, knowing a little bit about the industry, the problems they have, knowing what you do, the product and services, you will persuade with the facts through the art of storytelling. Look at any successful salesperson out there. Grant Cardone, whether you like him or not. Uh, 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 what's his name? Um, Jordan Belfort, Dan Locke, any of those, they have the art of persuasion. They know how to get people to make things happen, or they get people and customers to take action, right? That's your job. I don't agree with all their tactics, but I'm trying to make the point. So you have to be persuasive. Okay, the number four value through persuasion, through the art of storytelling, through you being valuable, you have to be able to show them the value, especially if you're on the phone, all you have is your voice. So that voice with the different tonality, the inflections of your voice, how you use your voice, is going to paint the picture for the person on the phone. So, when you have value and you can convey it through persuasion, through the art of storytelling, through conviction, they will visualize the solutions to their problems. They will visualize revenue and profits. That's what the end customer will see. Because remember this, it's not about you, it's about them. But you are the bridge to solving their problem. Does that make sense? So that's number four, value. Number five is very, very important. By the end of the conversation or during the conversation, if you did the storytelling the right way and you were persuasive and, conviction, and, and with conviction and they saw the value, they are going to want to own it. Any smart businessman would. So it is your job, my job, to persuade them with conviction, with value, with solutions, that they need to own it and that they want to own it. Remember, people buy two ways. They either need something or they want something. It's just that cut and dry. It's not complicated. So don't make it any harder than what it is, okay? Then number six, You are their guy. I've had people tell me, you're my guy. Okay, what do you mean by I'm your guy? You haven't hired me yet. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is when you do the first five steps, you become the go-to guy. You're their guy that finally solved their problem. You're the guy that's actually going to better their business. You're the guy that's got their back. Customers need to know that even though you have many customers, 
that when you deal with them, they're the ones that count. So you got to make it personal. You have to get them to not only own the services and the product, but that they want to own you. Owning you in a way is you're their guy. You're the guy they're going to go to for help, for advice, to solve their problems, like a doctor and a patient. That's what you got to do. Does that make sense? So I hope this has been helpful. Before we leave, uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button, share with others, and I do appreciate your feedback. So, number one is believe in your ability. Number two is believe in your product and services that you're offering. Number three, you got to be very persuasive. You got to understand the art of storytelling. You got to have conviction in what you're doing and what you're offering that is going to help them. Very important. Number four, you have to show value. They have to visualize what you're saying is going to be valuable to their company. It's going to be valuable to them. It's going to solve their problems. It's going to generate them more business. Does that make sense? And then number six, or number five, is they're going to want to own it. Take ownership. They're not buying something. They're owning something. People don't want to feel like they're being sold. They don't want to feel like they're being persuaded. But we all are. That's just a fact of life. And then number six, by you increasing your value, solving their problems, telling them the story, being persuasive, having conviction, believing in your ability, in the product and services, you become their guy. Is that you? So I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for being part of the martial arts of sales. Till we speak again, I say goodbye, and I wish everyone much success. Have a great day. Bye for now.